This is Bloodhound SSC, or supersonic car, billed as the fastest car in the world. It will travel at 1,000 miles an hour and hopes to find its way into the record books and put Britain on the map for its engineering prowess. But that's not the only goal of this ambitious engineering project. It's also hoping to inspire thousands of children across the country to get involved in science, technology, engineering and maths. Today, Bloodhound engineer Annie Beresford has come to Bay House School in Gosport to find out how much of an impact the project is having on schools. Hi, Keith. Hi, Annie. Annie Beresford from Bloodhound. Welcome to Bay House School. She's come to meet Head of Design Technology, Keith Last, to find out how the school has developed a range of activities that are grabbing the interest of pupils and staff alike and inspiring them to explore the wonders of STEM. Annie's a key member of the Bloodhound team, responsible for working out the logistics behind turning the car around so the car can make two successive runs within an hour and qualify for the land speed record. Part of my role with the Bloodhound project is to look at specifically the turnaround of the car um, and that really means is at the start of the measured mile through to you then have to turn the car around and get back through the measured mile within one hour. Uh, for us there's quite a lot to do in that process so that's my job is to coordinate everything in what happens in what order. The pupils have been put into teams and are working on five distinct projects. Finding a location, measuring the speed of sound, building a rocket powered car, marketing the project and field testing. But before Annie gets to grips with what the pupils have been doing, it's their chance to hear about the project firsthand. Annie starts by explaining what it means to go supersonic and break the sound barrier. What you're seeing here on the front of this car is a shockwave. And that's caused because you're going faster than sound now, so you're telling the air in front of you that you're coming, but actually it can't hear you because you're getting there so quickly that the air doesn't know that you're arriving and you bash into it and it creates this big shockwave. So that boom that you just heard was the fact that the car was bashing into the air and it was going into it because it hadn't, the air hadn't had time to move out of its way because it was going faster than the speed of sound. What's unique about Bloodhound is that the project is opening up all the technical information about the car to anyone who's interested. What Bayhouse School has done is use the information to help develop a range of activities. Bloodhound SSC is an absolutely unique project in the sense that we can give teachers and children full access to everything that we are doing so they can see all of the information, all the technology, all the design that is going into this car, which is unlike any other engineering project out there, whether it's Space Shuttle or Formula One, where it's such a hidden technology. We're offering it to everybody, so hopefully it can be used to inspire the next generation. We actually run a four-week project and they have a deadline that if they're not ready in four weeks' time, they won't be able to run their car and during that time they have to design and produce the car as well as doing a lot of research and completing a booklet which we've used the Bloodhound site for quite extensively, um, taking resources off of there, put them into a booklet which they uh, work their way through in teams. The pupils here are getting to grips with the key engineering challenges facing the Bloodhound team. This group have been charged with the task of finding a suitable location in the world to run the real Bloodhound car. What sort of surfaces have you looked at so far then? Um, most of them are sort of, sort of desert mm -hmm. areas, um, which are really flat because the desert is quite yeah. flat. Uh, we've just looked at Newfoundland Basin here, which is yeah. AC, so that's definitely not... But Newfoundland Basin is one of the places that we've looked at, and Newfoundland's actually a salt flat. Oh, salt. And, it looks a, like a and it gets <laughs> flooded, um, so it is underwater for part of the year. So that and that's really one of the reasons that. we've dismissed it, is it has a very small weather window where we can actually run. And it's also salt, which isn't our preferred surface. So we're looking to run on a desert-like surface that's really hard and really flat. It's been really cool working on the Bloodhound project because it's great working in a team because normally in CDT we do our own not like things individually, but on the Bloodhound project we've been doing it in a team and it's really good to work in teamwork. This team are calculating the speed of sound, 
One microphone is placed next to a sound source, the bashing of a hammer. The second is placed a metre away from the same sound source. Pupils can then measure the delay between the sound reaching each microphone and hence calculate the speed of sound. Now. Stop. This team are building a model of the Bloodhound car. This is the pack of materials that we give the pupils, um, some basic styrofoam blocks which they have to glue together with PVA. We give them a small pre-cut block for the rocket motor, which goes at the rear, and then once they've got the basic block glued together, then they use their design um, to start cutting out the shape using simple hand tools, um, files, glass paper, we give them two larger MDF wheels, two small MDF wheels, some small black tube, two sections of that, and then some simple dowel to form the axles, which they can decide how well it fits into the tube, and then hopefully they progress on and produce a finished car with the addition of um, wings, aerofoils, whatever they decide is good for their aer aerodynamics. How are you guys getting on? What are you doing? Six. Oh, just, you're um, marking out your just car. Just marking out the rough shape, yeah. Yeah, we're we'll marking out. We're doing to this design. Oh, we're just okay. Missing Watch. out the fins on the side. So, why have you gone for this design? Because it's curved and mm -hmm. yeah, it looks quite. So you'll get all the really nice yeah. aerodynamic yeah, flow over yeah. it. Okay. I hope that as a female engineer coming into the school, that they can see that anybody can go into engineering and have a really great job. I think breaking a world land speed record has probably got to be one of the most exciting jobs available and I'm actually there doing it so hopefully I can inspire some girls to come into the project as well. This team are designing a logo as part of the marketing campaign. So what's important about your logos? What, what's your logo of? We think it should be colourful so that it stands out. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. But then you're going to have to have the lettering in there because that's the name of our car, so... Yeah. If you don't so have the you... lettering, you don't know what it is. So it identifies your car as, like, branded yeah. with that, yeah. But it can't be too detailed because otherwise it's like, you won't... If it's, like, loads of colours in there, you won't be able to notice it too easy, that's so it's got to be quite yeah. basic. You want something like, like your logos or, like, my Bloodhound logo that you'll be able to put on a shirt or put on the side of your car or be able to embroider and do lots of different things with, don't you? Yeah. Excellent. The children at Bay House School have done some really exciting projects. So not, it's not all about just getting your car to go fast, it's all about having a brand that the world can recognise and about finding somewhere where you can actually run a car. And they seem to have done some really interesting work on that. Well, it brings all the STEM subjects together really well, especially in technology here, where we can sort of deliver a little bit of science, a little bit of maths, they work out the speed of their car. It's a real project that they can see actually uses maths, uses science, and you need a knowledge of all those subjects to actually achieve the final outcome. Planning and preparation over, it's time for the fifth and final project, the race itself. Let's meet the teams. We're, We're Jeffrey Patrick. Patrick. We're Arctic Thunder. We're, We're Supersonic. We're Soda Racer. The cars are powered by firework rockets and for safety run along a guide wire. Just like the real record attempt, the car speed is being calculated over a measured distance. Flags are laid out to mark the start and end points. Four teams, but there can only be one winner. Five, four, three, two, one. <laughs> Disaster strikes for Geoffrey Patrick as the axles collapse, leaving the wheels behind but still a respectable 32 miles per hour. I don't know, I think we didn't, like, glue the wheels in enough, so they fell off. <laughs> I feel all right that the wheels went off because they went fast with them off then when they were on, but it's a bit disappointing that they didn't stay on. Five, four, three, two, one. 
worse for Arctic Thunder, who failed to even complete the measured distance and didn't finish. I feel disappointed because I didn't make the end of the run successfully. I'm happy that Ashley started because I, the wheel did get stuck quite badly, so I thought it might not have made it, but I'm glad I made it to the first marker. A better performance from Supersonic, but not quite breaking the sound barrier, with a top speed of 35 miles per hour. It went quite well. Uh, didn't break. Felt really good racing the, the car because uh, it, it went faster than I thought it was going to be. But storming into the winning slot at 42 miles per hour is Solent Racer and a victory for the all-girl team. I'm really excited. Cool. Our car won. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was, it was so really exciting. good. Yeah, because we had to change our design a lot, and um, <laughs> because it just wouldn't have worked, and the aerodynamics won't, wouldn't be very good. And after we changed it, I think it worked out really well. Yeah, cool. no, we, never, yeah. we never would have thought it would have won, but you know, here we go. <laughs> I've been really impressed by how the children have actually taken literally a block of styrofoam and modelled it into what is an extraordinarily fast car. I mean, some of these cars have gone to 60 odd miles an hour, which is fantastic. They've really put a lot of effort and thought into how they're going to get the car to do those sorts of speeds and what the aerodynamics of the car is doing, so it's really fantastic. We learn how to self-manage in our teams because of how we... Um, we weren't really told how to do it that much. We were told how to make the car and stuff, but um, we were completely let loose on what designs we wanted. I think I've learned more maths than anything else, uh, how to work out the speed of things, and also some science. Uh, now I can work out speed, the pressure, and the force of things, and also the aerodynamics and how it's used in, in everyday life. We will keep running the project while the Bloodhound SSC is being built, and then we're trying to encourage the pupils to actually go to the website, look at the website, and some of them may even join the supporters club that I know is on the website. And um, the pupils can actually see something that's happening in the real world today, now, and they're actually becoming part of it. And hopefully we will encourage some engineers of the future. It's really exciting for me to come into a school and be able to see how Bloodhound is actually influencing the children as they're doing their work. And it's really good to be able to see the kids really excited and engaged with using Bloodhound and building their rocket cars, but also looking at uh, where you could run the car um, and what sort of uh, aerodynamics the car needs to be able to get the best performance. So it's fascinating to see them using what we're doing in the classroom. If you want an, quite an exciting project that will bring all of the STEM-related subjects together, Bloodhound is definitely a project to choose.